the large-scale creative project entitled The Stolen Crimea – The Pain and Tragedy of an Entire Nation in the Language of Art. Find out in today's Pro Art program how Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar artists reproduced the history of Stalin's deportation with the help of artistic installations and what modern parallels arise in the context of historical events. We arrived to Krasnovysherka on June 12, 1944. It took us almost a month to get there. We were lodged in a house without windows and doors. There was no light, nothing. Only jackals were yowling. Thanks to Allah, I found my countrymen. I met with them and saved them. I had a feeling that very limited information was conveyed to people in order that they would feel it in their hearts. Architects, designers and a team of installers worked on this project. All of us came here and talked to one another. You can see all the stages of the genocide in chronological order in the halls of one of the pavilions of the Exhibition of Economic Achievements, where the exhibition The Stolen Crimea, the history of deportation, is being exhibited. But the preface to everything was the central construction of the sinister red color, a composition of rusty metal in a round hall with a high ceiling and pretentious frescoes. After the project team had entered the halls, it wanted to work with all the elements in this hall, including the frescoes on the ceiling and columns. In order to focus attention on these frescoes, we placed grids in front of the frescoes that reminded one of political prisoners, immigrants and so on. You can see the geometric avant-garde forms on the grids. Such names as Malevich, Rodchenko, Kosarev and Yermilov became known all over the world. They are all Ukrainians. These are exactly the memories of these times and reminders that we are going back to the roots of the avant-garde again. This is the art style that the development of Ukrainian culture ended with. Stalin's Smile, a large-scale architectural and sculptural complex by painter Anton Lohov, is the first display item the visitors see in the exhibition's halls. This is a so-called labyrinth. You can go inside the construction, walk and get lost there. The composition consists of such sharp geometric forms resembling guillotines. Another point is the image of the Iron Curtain in the direct and figurative sense. Rusty metal is also the first image, which also conveys the idea that the Soviet past is still in our minds. It is rusting and still exists and obviously shows the image of the leader Josef Stalin. It appears as a blue ghost. And some things rise above this composition, which symbolize the souls of the people. After Stalin's death, it became easier to live. While he was alive, it was hard. In 1956, Commandant Anatoly Ivanov called me into his office and said, Nuri, you were deported mistakenly. We will issue new passports at the passport office in the town of Chermoz, but on one condition. You must say you will never return to Crimea and will not demand to return confiscated property. You can go wherever you want, but not to Crimea. Empty room from which the Crimean Tatar family was thrown out by agents of the People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs and KVD in the middle of the night. This project is created in such a way that the viewer is able not only to read information and raw statistics, but they can also feel all the pain of this tragedy in their heart and soul. Svitanak, or the Dawn, installation. This installation was the most emotional for many visitors, the author Fatima Osmanova told. Video stories of witnesses of the deportation reveal the horror suffered by the Crimean Tatars in 1944 and in the early years of exile. In this Svitanak installation, you can listen to stories of the eyewitnesses of deportation and feel the warmth on the beds of those people who were deported within 15 minutes. 
Şimdi yanında o 30'un çeyitinde, bu mezarların çeyitinde 30 kalkı... On May 18th, the population of Atuz was gathered near a cemetery surrounded by soldiers with machine guns. Bu 30'un kalkı, bana İsa dedim, İsa dedim... My grandfather İsa and all the family members went to the grave of his daughter in Jifa to read a prayer and give their condolences. All present were sure that we would be shot. Kabirlerin yanına varıp savuklaştılar. Niçin desen ana pulimotlarını korgen son? Üstümüzde hep sarbalarımızın taşladı, yanarbalarımızın... Mother woke us up and said to dress new clothes. They came to shoot us. Our clothes will become a shroud for us, she said. Bunlar bizim koyumuzun ortasına, hepsimizi kalkalım, koyumuzun ortasına... They gathered the whole population in the center of the village. Maşinalar... Then we were put into trucks and they brought us to Yevpatoria. There they put us into livestock train cars that were dirty. In 18 days we were transported to Mirzachal, dry step in Uzbekistan. When we were evicted, I was nine months pregnant. It turned out that there were eight days left before the infant's birth. We were evicted on May 18th, and on May 26th, contractions began. Then our train stood on a bridge in Saratov. Nobody could help me. My mother ran to a nurse and almost missed the train. On May 18, 1944, all the Crimean Tatars had 15 minutes to pack their things to leave their homeland forever. Fatima Osmanova created an emotional, metaphorical image of what happened on that terrible night, a composition in the shape of a sand glass, where these 15 minutes of a whole life were marked. The lower part of the sand glass consists of bags. In the Crimean Tatar language, they're called bokcha. People could put some food or things in these bokcha. These bags are decorated with flower ornaments. This suggests that the Crimean Tatars have an ancient century-old culture. So they put all that culture in one bag and left their native lands. The upper part of this installation consists of white handkerchiefs, which symbolize many deaths in deportation and the first years of life of Crimean Tatars in exile. I fell ill with typhus. In the hospital they thought I had died carried me to a morgue. Then my 16-year-old sister also fell ill. My mother died at night. We slept nearby, but I did not feel it. After long roams, we were brought to Tashkent. We were told, your relatives were exiled to Uzbekistan, so search for them there. I came into a cramped room without windows and doors. My father made a bench and put straw on it. My parents, brothers and sisters all laid on it. There were no pillows, no mattresses and no blankets. The girl was named Sidika. She was very pretty. She lived only six months and died of starvation. The child had no birth certificate. It seems that she even did not exist. Only one name remained in my heart and mind forever. I always remember that I had a daughter named Sidika, and I constantly cried. The authors collected detailed information about the forced deportation of the entire Crimean Tatar people from their historic homeland. We show statistical data that tell about this tragedy through numbers and modern methods, namely augmented reality.
music that was especially written for the project and the lighting of each hall played an important role in creating of a very dramatic atmosphere. Seeing as the deportation took place in the morning at 5 a.m., there is twilight illumination in all exhibit halls in order to show the shadows on the walls, silhouettes of people who are not visible but are present there. These are very long shadows. We represent the culture of the Crimean Tatar people. We show it through animated, reconstructed photos that were painted by us. We gave them a new lease on life. In this way, we wanted to show people the beautiful culture of the Crimean Tatars and help them understand exactly what we lost due to the deportation. Painter Anton Lohov called this work the shards. This glass mirror waterfall is a symbol of frozen mountain water that will never quench one's thirst. At the foot of the waterfall, there are silhouettes of the mountains and their red color symbolizes blood, pain and sufferings. Why did I call it the shards? This is a waterfall of frozen mirrors that flows down in fragments. The first one is red. It symbolizes the Soviet regime, tragedy, drama and death. The red line symbolizes people's destinies. Berka and Marama, you are friends of two nations. You have only a different fate. It's time for me to go home, the Marama whispered. The theme of returning home and links with Uzbekistan and Crimea is illustrated in this quatrain. Actually, these are two national pieces of clothing in one work. The apple of the temptation is between them. The installation of the famous Crimean Tatar sculptor Aider Aliyev, who tells the story of life in exile. Fragments of slate, old roof tile, small barns with cots, a carpet on a bare wall. In such a way the Crimean Tatars returned to their homeland to start a new life from scratch. This is the time portal. From the one side there is a wall of the 1940s and 1950s, and you pass through it. From the other side there are objects of the 1980s to 1990s. Why does it consist of two parts? Because the first part is the moment of deportation, and the second part is the moment of returning home. Hence, the work is titled Return. A look at their current situation is colored by depth and emotionality through the prism of art. It affects the most delicate strings of the human soul and the tragic pages of people's lives are perceived with double dramatism. The tile is standard, one that artists used in all regions of Ukraine, including Crimea. Why is it placed with some kind of inclination? There is a very interesting play of shadows that are cast by the tile on the wall. It created the so-called silhouette of the city. Crimean Tatar painter Aider Khatib presents an installation called Color. To use black and white gamut is unaccepted for Crimean Tatars. Here the painter uses black and white gamut intentionally to show paint flown on canvas symbolizing the huge number of deaths with the ascent of the Soviet Union. This is an installation by the Crimean Tatar painter Elzara Seydametova, who shows the history of her family through her work. These are the 1990s, when her family was returning to its homeland. People who cannot afford to build houses build these temporary buildings. They cover them with polyethylene and with other building materials. These houses are without windows and doors. These are rough, simple forms. In this installation she presents two portraits. These are the images of her grandparents. The Quran is in the center of this installation. This is the only thing that her family could take along, saved it and returned it to its homeland. They always wanted to return to Crimea, overcoming all the difficulties, because no one loved and respected this land like the Crimean Tatars. No one knew how to cultivate fields and gardens. Nobody cared for the nature of the peninsula as they did. We wanted to tell the story of the deportation of the Crimean Tatars not only to Ukrainians, but also to people around the world, so they could feel this pain through the heart. And all the installations are artistic, because it is not just bare historical facts. These are artistic visual images. 
the creators have set plans to transform the exhibition into a multimedia project and present it on online tours. We will complement this video and photos with musical accompaniment and additional stories about deportation. I think that this project has become a very good foundation for the creation of a museum of deportation that will clearly show this tragedy. Crimea and the Crimean Tatars. Today this topic is deeply felt in Ukraine and in the whole world. And in order to understand the depth of love of your native land, it is important to recognize these people, to understand its genetic code through culture, everyday life and through the prism of historical events.